as a huge fan of the Subaru, I can tell you a lot about it. So first of all, I want to tell you my experience with the Subaru in the United States. Back in 2012, when I just got here and used to work in Long Beach in the body shop. So first car I got, it was 1999 Subaru Forester 2.5 with frozen engine. So I got it for really cheap. I towed it back to my shop when I used to work. And in the back of the body shop where I used to work, I put that engine back together with some sand and some tools. I had no idea how to put it on. But again, I put it on, the car was running fine. And I drove it for about six months and I sold it. So basically all the people who used to work in the shop, they were surprised how come I could assemble that engine so fast on the backyard of the body shop and it's working. So it's been running good. Since time when I used to live in Russia, I was a huge fan of the Subaru and I like all of them. And I do like the engine. It's opposite four cylinder engine. I used to have a turbo, I used to have WRX, I used to have ACI, a lot of them, especially from Japan with the twin turbo engine legacy. Before, if somebody knows it, you're gonna appreciate it what I'm telling you right now. So the famous engine, opposite four cylinder or six cylinder, back in the days, it used to be only six cylinder with chain. The rest of them used to be the belt. So now, back in 2011, they start doing 2.0 with chains on it. So I do not like those engines anymore. Uh, and there is a lot of reason why. I'm not gonna tell you why especially I don't like this engine, but this one, it's a 2018 Subaru Crosstech with 2.0 engine, about 140 horsepower on it and CVT transmission. Ta-da! Why it's CVT transmission? I have no idea. That's not the way it's supposed to be Subaru on, but it is on. So what you can tell right now, it has a high suspension. You might gonna say it's lifted, but it's not. It's a cross track. As you can see, this car a little bit lifted if you're gonna compare with regular Impreza. And you might gonna say it has a lift kit, but it's not. So it's been made this way from the factory. So the cross track and Impreza has exactly the same suspension, but the shocks on it and the plate for the spring is a little bit higher. That's why suspension on the whole car, it's a little bit higher than the Impreza. But again, any part from this car, you can put it on the Impreza and it's gonna be exactly the same. But if you're gonna put the shocks from the uh, cross track to the Impreza, your Impreza gonna get higher. So the guy who owned this car before, he spent a lot of money on it. Not a lot, but quite a lot. So first of all, there is the metal trims. They cost money and you can check how much they are. There is the tires. They're super nice. It's a toy tires. It might gonna do off-road a little bit, but again, transmission not gonna allow you to do so because on this car, if you're gonna go through the mat or through the sand, or you're gonna try clump up to the hill, transmission gonna start overheating. And the result of that, the car is gonna get stuck. But the coolest point, when I see this car online and I decided to buy it, the way the guy built it. So instead of just paint the sides here and there, you know, put the rims on it, he put the spare tire on the top. Why? Probably because he couldn't fit it inside the spare tire holder in the car. That's why he decided to put it on the roof. Yeah, I do see there is a dent on the roof. Probably the guy didn't care about it. I do not care about it either because it looks so nice. It looks like the zombie apocalypse is already coming and you do prepare for that. You bought this car for yourself. You want to keep it in case of something going to happen. You can jump inside and drive it, but you're not going to be able to drive far enough and up hill enough because again, you have a CVT transmission, you have 2.0 engine, 140 horsepower, which is not enough for this car at all. Now we're going to check what's going on under the hood. It's a standard factory 2.0 engine with, like I say, 140 horsepower, which is not enough at all. There is a CVT transmission and it's just a cool car. It's simple. It's worth its own money. And uh, you can buy it to enjoy it, to drive it around the city or to drive it a little bit off the road, but not so high enough and not so far away. I want to tell some words about the design of this car. Do I like the design? Yes, I do love it. I do love the way it made, like the hatchback. You do have a lot of space in the car. I mean, the size of the car, not so huge, but again, there is a lot of different pockets. What I do not like about this car, that's the headlights. The headlights, they kind of not so good. That's why the guy who owned this car before, he put those nice yellow fog lights so you can see it at night, but not normally at night. During the day, again, if you want to turn on your headlights, you're going to see nothing because they are so bad. So from the back of this car, this car looks so good from the side, from the back either. But again, if you're gonna see there is a different stickers on it, it's so cool, you know, like this and that. And since it's one owner, you're gonna see all the stickers on the plate, which is kind of cool. Some people keeping it over the time and just put it on. So just show it to everyone. I do own this car since the beginning. So now we're gonna see the trunk compartment. I mean, the trunk compartment is such a small one. And again, there is a space for the tire, for the spare tire. And I'm gonna tell you and show you why they put the tire on the top of the roof. ta -da! Just because you cannot put it. So it's supposed to be donut here, but there is no donut anymore. 
So the guy just prepared in case of something he's going off the road and he needs the spare tire. He cannot put the don't anymore because it's not gonna go. So he put the tire on the top of the roof, but looks like the tire on it, it's brand new. So means he never used it before. So as you might all know, there's a trunk compartment. Plus you can drop the seats down and you can put your, uh, you can put your sleeping bag and just sleep inside the car. That's what a lot of people doing when they go in somewhere after the, uh, after town and, uh, I think it's so nice because in the morning again you can open the trunk you can lay down and drink your coffee if you do have one and just enjoy your view from the outside so it's a nice small car which is super cool for the money whatever it's worth right now especially it's a used one it has 130,000 miles on the car it still drives great transmission feeling okay they might fix it before or might replace it I'm not sure this is original one because the way it's acting looks like it's it's really in good condition So the space inside the car, it's pretty much enough for you and for your family. Can you put the child seats on the back and fit your kids there? Yes, you can. Can you use this car for Uber and make some money on it? Yes, you can. That's pretty much enough space. So what about in the front? On the front, I would say that's about the same. It has enough space. You can move the seat, you know, all the trunk compartment. I mean, all the boxes, all the pockets in the car, they're kind of cool. They are available. You can put the drinks here and there. The glove box, it's a little bit bigger than Toyota, I would say so. So you can put, the, the, there is a manual books they already missing here. Means they use it the way it's supposed to be. There is, there is some audio system, which is super simple because it's a cross track, but it's a base model and it's still cool. So basically on the back of the seat, you can put three child seats you might gonna fit them you have to squeeze it a little bit you might gonna squeeze your butt between them if you're gonna put only two of them but again i would not recommend it it's not the car you're gonna fit five or six people inside plus you have a lot of stuff to put it in the trunk so just don't do that since we do have a base model it's not limited it is a base so what would you have in base that's a backup camera number one number two that's an x mod x mod that's i mean it's doing nothing when you turn it on you're just going down the hill and it's going to hold the car a little bit it's not going to accelerate it's not going to change the gear it's just going to hold the car when you're going down the hill so it's a cool option i mean we do have a heated seats front one only so we do have a steering wheel and it's a leather which is nice for the base model we do have a pedal shifting which is i don't know it's a useless in my opinion and again there's some controls of this sound system you might gonna call someone you might not gonna call someone but again if you're somewhere deep in the wood you might not gonna be able to call anyone so we do have a sauce button i'm not sure if it's gonna work uh but we do have it so the climate control on this car it's pretty much simple it's a manual there is ac and it's working really good i mean it's cool enough to be inside the car to drive it around the city so let's go for it right and see how it goes so from the beginning of the drive and as soon as you put it on drive you might gonna feel it it's a cvt transmission the way it jumps and it doesn't matter it has 130,000 miles or it has 1000 miles you're gonna feel it right away so now we're driving it and it looks like it has one constantly speed the gear not changing and we're going thousand rpm and the speed going up a little bit so that's me that means we drive in cvt car the performance of this car i'm stepping on the gas all the way in and it just 40 miles per hour so it's a good acceleration for something for someone but not for me anyway it handles good even if it's lifted we do have a nice tires it's off-road tires i mean you can use it anywhere you can use it in the city in the sand in the dirt it has a little bit noise but not that much so you can handle it no worries the brakes on this car i mean they soft there is nothing special about it they just they just the original factory brakes and am i gonna overheat a little bit if you're gonna drive it fast and try to stop this car uh it's not gonna stop right away what's gonna happen the brakes gonna overheat and you might gonna step on it and there is no brakes at all uh just go it down a little bit and push it slowly and you're gonna be okay with that as we drive in the impreza it is a cross track but at the same time it is impreza why it's so famous why it's so popular because the subaru first of all it's not that expensive you can buy a brand new one for like 23 maybe 24 000 and uh, you're gonna get the subaru what are you gonna get you're gonna get opposite engine uh four cylinder basic one but it's super nice and uh like the people saying boo 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 what you can do you can put exhaust on it just just a rear muffler and it's gonna be totally different sound coming from the car because of the engine uh, because it's made this way so again back in 90s 
there's a huge history about the Subaru why I love it so much when when it was number one in the rally worldwide and the car was driving so fast and there is a lot of racers they've been promoting this car people start buying them. they start buying the Impreza they start buying WRX and after the STI came and uh, when I got my first STI back in Russia like over 15 maybe more years ago somebody told me you know Subaru STI that's the car you can buy factory built and it's ready for rally and I quite didn't notice that why he's telling me that but again I drove that car a little bit and I found a lot of different uh, things on the car the suspension the engine the transmission the way it made you know the rear differential how you can lock it the spray for the intercooler you can pull it down your turbo just to get more performance if you're driving it really crazy and after I recognized it yes he was right STI that's the car the cheapest rally race car you can buy factory built and and it's gonna hold all your expectation from the Subaru you can buy so why do people buying Subaru right now I don't know everybody has their own reason to buy it I would say I would buy this car number one because it's all-wheel drive it doesn't matter it has automatic transmission or it has CVT transmission the popular model that's uh, Outback and again six cylinder comes with regular automatic transmission six speed it's durable I mean I drove a lot of those cars the newer one 2018 19 and I had a lot of miles on it some of them I got it by accident it was 160,000 miles but the car was so amazing drives so good the six cylinder engine it was so great the sound of it there is no oil leak nothing and even this car right now 130,000 miles it still runs great there is no knocking noise there is no cylinder piston noise uh, or any barracks it's not leaking oil surprisingly and uh, it's just cool you just pop the gas change the oil on time and it's probably gonna go next 70 80,000 miles with no problem the one cool thing about the Subaru what I constantly see at the auction if the car has a lot of miles about 200,000 maybe a little bit over it doesn't matter what year or 08 uh, or 2010 the car gonna come with manual transmission which means people buy it and drive in places where you cannot drive the regular Prius or Hyundai Elantra on a manual stick shift transmission why again I told you why because all of them comes with CVT transmission right now and the manual, manual transmission it's optional you can buy it or you can order it so the people know things and they know the Subaru it's gonna do much better when it has manual transmission not the CVT anymore and again this engine 2.0 140 horsepower it's not enough at all what you can do I mean if you compare it with Outback Outback it's bigger car it's roomy it has a lot of room inside the car the car itself bigger and heavier what you can do with this car and I done that before back in Russia you can take this engine out you can take this transmission out just buy somewhere maybe pop art or from junkyard just buy the turbo engine from WRX with manual transmission all together and do the swap and it's gonna be so much easier for you you cannot even imagine the PCM for the for the engine you're gonna buy you're just gonna plug it in here and transmission with engine together you're just gonna put it here and take this one out and sell it somewhere on the Craigslist to make some extra money that's it if the cross track gonna come with 2.5 turbo engine and manual six or five speed doesn't matter transmission it's gonna be super super nice cross track ever made because you're gonna get a lot of performance on those tires you're gonna get a lot of performance off the road up to the hills and it's gonna be just a amazing car that's what I would do for sure if I would keep this car for myself so what about the information the car providing you while you're driving it so first of all it's a cluster it's in the middle of the car right so you're gonna see the rpm of your engine you're gonna see the speed you're gonna see the gas level and the odometer I mean and the mileage whatever car you made so in the middle we do have some uh, computer what you can see the your FPG what's the distance to empty in the middle sound system screen there is a backup camera number one there is a radio some some iPhone if you want to plug it in or any other phone you can you want to pair it and some apps the apps just Pandora aha I have no idea what is that I never use it even the Pandora I know what it is but I never use it so so in general what I would say about the Subaru it's really nice cool car 
and if you want to buy one buy it for sure but the buy the right one it's gonna fit your needs put like put any comments bye